presentation and thanks very much for this uh, to Robin for standing in for someone who couldn't make it. So we've got Robin Wilkinson who is one of these skilled people who can buy, locate or wear more than one hats because he's actually a Royal Air Force reservist and also senior category manager for the Royal Navy and a few other uh, job titles as well but I'll let him explain that. And he's going to do the final presentation and it's on modernising maritime training. Okay, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, thank you very much for that introduction. Um, I'm Rob Wilkinson. I am the category manager for the Royal Navy in my day job, 220 days a year. And I run Royal, Naval, sorry, Royal Air Force Reserve e-learning for 90 days a year, which leaves about 36 days a year for weekends, which is quite entertaining. A um, little bit of a put-together presentation, short notice. What we're here today to do is to talk about where we're bringing the Navy, and let me give you the context. We've got, on the defence learning environment, 600,000 users. This ranges from air cadets, army cadets, all the way up to five-star, and all the sort of individuals between that. But the context today is particularly the naval environment, and the reason we look to that is because it's the most difficult. You've got big grey boxes, which have limited connectivity, and some ships run at one megabyte connectivity for about six months at sea. So that provides quite a lot of challenges. We're bringing this forward here. Particularly the one today is about the Maritime Warfare School. Geographically located uh, disparately. You've got elements down at Raleigh, you've got Excellent, you've got at Collingwood, all the way up to sunny Scotland. So it can cause quite a few challenges to keep these elements which are doing similar training to the same area but all over the country and it comes down to the challenge between what is training versus what is education. The prime site we have is HMS Collingwood. Now it looks quite innocuous but if you look there there is a huge number of different elements on this one single site and you look at the multipliers out from there. What we have is we've got 2,890 courses that were planned between 2016 and 2017. You had a total number of courses that were delivered with 2,500 courses. You look at the numbers there, a total of nearly 400,000 man training days. That's quite a training organisation to bring forwards. And we've only gone from Moodle 1.9 to 3.1 in the last 18 months. So bringing them all the way forwards and all the instructors and the training is quite a challenge. But particularly important is warfare. How do we fight these ships? How do we protect the nation's interests? And you see some lovely punchy photos there of different ships doing different things. And within that, we have weapons engineering. And we have, Babcock is one of our primary contractors, and we have those challenges that all of the people do with contractors, but they are putting forward and bringing it forward. But we also bring in divers, physical training, and international defence training. So not only do we have 600,000 users who are British, we have Nigerians, we have Japanese, we have Chinese, we have a huge variety, which as you can imagine, creates quite a lot of administrative challenges for us. We use a lot of simulators, and we use a lot of simulation. Here is a broken out model of the Queen Elizabeth. And interestingly, about half an hour ago, I was dealing with a help desk call where the key e-learning software to allow people to qualified to go on the system broke. So our platform actually has a direct operational effect. If we didn't bring it back online, we would have potentially not been able to send ships to sea. So it really is quite a high tempo. This use of simulations and big shiny things is what everyone thinks is really, really nice. But they forget that actually what underlies this all is Moodle. For us, it's our daily bread. It's what keeps us there. We show all the senior officers the shiny stuff, but day in and day out, our Moodle keeps going on for us. Um, I forgot to I put two presentations together, so I'm going to just move past that piece. So the scope of what we've actually found when bringing this Moodle together, we had a learning management system called the Defence Learning Portal, which was pretty much akin to a library, but with a drunk librarian, because it was all misfiled and you didn't really find anything. We're now with Moodle, we've got a virtual campus which we exploit. 
And a lot of the elements you see on those screens there are actually things you all understand within Moodle and you all see how it comes together. And this is one of the presentations we gave to our two star last week. But for us, it's how do we evolve from that left hand all the way to that fully fledged right hand simulation. We've got some courses that are there, really there, and we've got some courses that are just repository of information. And bringing everything forward from that left hand to the right hand is a monumental task which we are working on. Some more punchy pictures for you, going from the left to the right. We're using a lot of simulation and we've just managed to put a Unity player embedded through SCORM into Moodle, allowing for us to exploit gamification live on Moodle Mobile as well. So we only turned Moodle Mobile on yesterday. So we, we often joke that we're modernizing training. I do think a lot of the times we're bringing training to where people currently are. But if you think about the architecture, the infrastructure, and the security ramifications we have, I think we're doing a reasonable job. So what we've got for the defense learning environment, which is Moodle, as you see there, what it does now, we're bringing together aligning professional training and we're bringing together a suite of learning. And some of the key use cases I'm going to show you shortly, we'll see how we're moving from education into the training arena and actually into the exploitation of how we're delivering uh, effect into operations. So the key elements for us, we need to get people through the system, reduce our costs, increase the quality, and get people on ships saving lives getting to the Mediterranean, fishing people out of uh, those uh, refugees out of the sea, getting people to disaster relief zones. That's the bottom line. It's all about operational effect. So our concept of exploitation, this single Moodle we have has got a naval service site to it where we have gone for an intrinsic look and feel. Unlike some uh, areas where you go into faculties, we actually have gone for an intrinsic design where people come and go, I'm a submariner, this is where I go. I'm warfare, I'm general service. It's trying to bring together people as a intrinsic driver. Unlike universities where people pay to go to university, their incentive is, I've spent the money. We have to convince people that it's in their interest to keep going. It's a very different dynamic. So, we've gone for a simple, robust, logical, intuitive we know that Moodle is commercially, uh, com it's um, IT freeware, even though we pay somebody to bespoke it for us. We're focused on handheld devices. How do we put this in somebody's pocket? 99.9% .9 of people all have smartphones with them. It's all about providing a time and place and access to the course, but we're moving beyond just courseware now. We're moving into knowledge modeling. We've literally just started putting together a division officer's toolkit so somebody can have on their phone at a time, at sea, offline, something's happened, I remember doing this in training, I need to refresh, and they can actually pull up just-in-time support material. It's going to allow us to prioritise training and break the dependency on fixed locations. The MOD is financially constrained by the taxpayer, as we should be, and we're closing down Sultan, so we're having to put more into less. But when we look at the flipped classrooms and some of the excellent presentation we've seen, there's nothing wrong with that, you know, as long as it's done fit and appropriately. We are rethinking our framework of how we deliver training. Can we get people to arrive on site, turn up must on a Monday morning, say, right, this week is self-study, and if they go and play tennis every morning, is that a problem? No, as long as they're delivering the output, that means they're qualified to go and do the operations that they need to do. We're reducing the separated service totals. What that means is nights out of bed. Bottom line is we need to keep people, we need to retain people. And if we're saying you're going up for a course that's a year, goodbye, or if we go, actually, you're going for a course of three months, but you're going to get nine months' worth of study leaving there. Very different attitude. And as long as we get the deliverable output and it's the highest quality, then we need to embrace these elements of change. So our current training methodology. You've all heard of the 10-70-20 model. We've all heard of that. Well, 
where our virtual learning environment supports us at the moment is around that 70% mark within the training proficiency. It's where we've got people coming through the door and where we've got people leaving the door. We're still working to exploit that pre-course learning. What we're looking to do is to shake that up a little bit. For, and I have to give credit to Lieutenant Commander Rob Driscoll for this because it's his slide. Pre-course, 40% pre-course, and these obviously we can argue about the size and the, the location, but knowledge learning, skills training, on-the-job consolidation, and then the application, almost a 40-30-20-10 a model. How that stands for us? Independent study, study leave. Breaking the dependency on turn up, sit in a classroom, watch PowerPoint. Nobody wants to do that. Nobody wants to do that at all. Residential courses? Just in time, right place, right kit, right equipment, efficient for the taxpayer. And then work-based application and operational application. People often think, actually, all we need to do is train. No, sometimes we do need to fight wars and we do need to put people in harm's way. This is where our defence learning environment, our current Moodle sits. It covers that area. But we're going to push it out to cover the whole gambit, right from left of art to right of art. And one of the big things is we will fail on stuff, but fail often, fail frequently, and fail forwards, as I think Will Smith said. As long as we're doing it right and we show value for money for the taxpayers, then it's the right thing to do. So our fixed defence learning environment application covers that arena. Our afloat or offline covers the pre-course learning just going down a rabbit hole, two weeks before a ship goes out on sea, it's chaotic. People have to do this course, that course, this course. They get on board ship and then they transit for maybe two weeks and they're bored. With Moodle Mobile, which switched on yesterday, we can go, right, have that holiday, have that time with your family. Now you're on board ship. Now, during this long haul, as you're traveling to wherever, you can do your coursework. We haven't changed the requirement for the learning. We've changed the location and we've given people back time with their families. And that, for me, is one of the big, big ones. The other one we're looking forward to is official sensitive. How do we take this and move this into the operational space? How do we use the data and go beyond it being a virtual learning environment? You'll see through some of the discussions we'll have shortly how we're actually bringing this into managed collective training and operational deployments. So looking at the Maritime Warfare School, this is the through life of a warfare officer, left to right. And you can see how they go. You can see the planned interventions, and you can see all the different trigger points there. And I do apologise, I did smash this together quite quickly. So the Royal Navy, we're driving defence exploitation of the defence learning environment. The Royal Navy is the leading service at the moment, and we're moving it from the collective and joint training space. It's got some real opportunities of how we can actually bring together, not only in the UK space, but potentially NATO and beyond. Changing the context, the afloat area, up until Moodle Mobile and up until the offline, bandwidth of one megabyte to a ship, you are not going to put a SCORM package through there. How do we actually move this forward? Well, Moodle Mobile has been a real game changer for this. And holistic training and the culture shift. The technology is not the issue. The issue that is, is how we bring people culturally to go, you know what, let's take that chance because we're one of the more risk averse organisations, as we should be, given the, the nature of the job. But it's bringing that culture along. And things like Moodle Moots are exceptionally what we need. And I keep campaigning that we need more armed forces personnel here. Key projects to make you aware of. Through life proficiency, proficiency management of warfare. We're exploiting. We haven't got anything other than core Moodle and a couple of additional platforms. We've got a, <clears throat> a wraparound, which is called Defence Gateway, which ties us to where we are. But we are limited to a maximum of 10 additional plugins, and that's it. So therefore, we have to make sure and be innovative in the way we bring things forward. So we're using competency frameworks and examining how we bring that to manage through proficiencies from somebody's first walking through initial training all the way to when they leave and how we use that operational data to inform. The brackets is how much time will be saved. We don't know at the moment. 
We've got to trial it. We've got to see. You know, fail often and keep trying. Rules of the road. At the moment, or up till last week, we used to send out an email with a paper-based exam. The ships would print it off, sit down, fill it out, mark it, and they go, yeah, okay, we're all, all monthly qualified for that. We've now put that online. We're using examining confidence-based marking, and that's proving very interesting because some of our navigators are very sure of themselves, shall we say, and they're getting a few nasty surprises. Um, we don't know how much time that's going to save, but we are looking into that. Exercise marking using the rubrics. We've got one exercise where all officers go up onto Dartmoor for three days in the wet wind, wind and rain. We're looking at live marking to the Moodle on the hill with tablets, and we estimate we'll save 100 man days through just doing live marking. And that's a one exercise and one establishment. We're using uh, rubrics as well to do instructor assessment. We're examining that and projecting the savings. Savings is the wrong phrase. The reduction in time potentially is 16.4 man years for one year by just changing to marking instructor assessments online. And those are just a small plethora of some of the things we're trying to do and push. Um, I often say Moodle's great, it can do anything. Moodle's also dangerous because it can do anything. It's about knowing what you need to do and where you need to go. Often when I work with people in Moodle, they go, I want to do this, 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 this. And we always have to say, just dial it back and do one thing at a time. Because people always, always, always overstretch themselves. And for us, it's about how we move from the generate community into the operate community. And from my two star last week, his brief simply said to me, proceed until apprehended, and I'll stand next to you in the court. So that is a very quickly culpable together, one from the Royal Navy, even though I'm in light blue. Any questions? Thank you. And to time. Do we have any questions? No, it's lunch. Yeah, we will forgive you <laughs> if it's lunch. Yeah, oh, we do have one up there. Hold on. It's only me. I'm going to have to run up there. Nobody's asleep. That's a good thing. Hi, I'm Dirk from the RCGP. Little query about content. Um, sorry, uh, the the number of courses you've got l online at the moment is 2,600. Who who writes your content? Okay. So how do you how do you get authors for 6,000 courses? How do you get authors for 6,000 courses? Authors. authors. Who's authoring them? Oh, who's authoring them? Yeah. Um, sorry, I'm not quite saying. Okay. Now, I'm, I'm coming from a content providing. Um, so um, if, I, if, I see, if I see an online, online learning environment that, has, that offers 6,000 different Moodle courses, um, I'm just asking myself, do you have 6,000 authors writing them? Or... How do you keep them up to date?
Thank you. Thank you. Any others? Yep, down here. There you go. Are you providing devices for people to use it offline, or are they using bringing their own smartphone on the ship for six months at a time? Any more? Or do we all want our lunch? Yep. No? All right. Thank you very much again. Thank you. So lunch is at one. Uh, and then if you want to come here, we start again at...